Welcome. Today we will be learning about the science behind bread making. We'll go through the bread making process step by step and explain the relevant science behind it. We'll start by going through the ingredients and understanding each of their contributions to the final product. Then I'll tell you about why bread rises. Finally, I'll explain how bread gets its golden brown crust. Like any recipe, when making bread, you must first start by gathering your ingredients. For this recipe, our ingredients are water, oil, sugar, salt, flour, and yeast. Each of these ingredients serves a chemical purpose and helps make bread delicious. The first step in the recipe is to dissolve the dehydrated yeast in water. The yeast acts as a leavening agent. Yeast is actually a fungus that helps make the bread rise. Yeast works by consuming glucose, or other carbohydrates, from the dough mixture and producing ethanol and carbon dioxide. As the yeast produces carbon dioxide, the gas is trapped in the dough mixture, causing the dough to rise over time. This is why proofing, or rising time, is essential in bread making. If you've ever looked really closely at a piece of bread, you've seen the little pockets left behind by the CO2 gas in rising. The yeast you get at the store, at least here in the United States, needs to be dissolved in warm water to activate it. The temperature of the water is very important. If the water is cold, the yeast will not activate, but if the water is too hot, the yeast will be killed. The water also helps the dry ingredients mix together. Next, we add the oil. Oil acts as the fat in this recipe. Other baked goods can use butter or lard instead of oil as the fat. The fat from the oil makes the bread softer and helps prevent the water from escaping during baking. The next ingredient to add is the sugar. The sugar serves a few different purposes, beyond making the bread taste sweet, of course. The sugar acts as a fuel for the yeast in its fermentation reaction. When heated, the sugar also goes through processes called Maillard reactions that contribute to the brown crust on bread. The next ingredient to add is the salt. The salt also improves the flavor of the bread. Salt helps shield charged gluten molecules from one another. Without the charges repelling one another, the gluten molecules can get closer together, strengthening and stabilizing the dough. Finally, we add the flour. The flour provides most of the structure of the bread. Additionally, the yeast uses glucose from the flour to fuel its reaction. The water in the mixture activates protein in the flour to form gluten a mixture of water and soluble proteins that make up the bread. Gluten proteins contain amino acids that favor hydrogen bonding, a process very important to the structure of the bread. Next, we must knead the dough. Kneading the dough is critical to making light, fluffy bread. Kneading stretches and compresses the dough, strengthening it. This is because as the dough is stretched, more hydrogen bonds can form between adjacent gluten proteins. The dough will start out very soft and squishy and over time will become smooth and more difficult to knead. Once the dough has been sufficiently kneaded, it's time to let the dough rise. We'll leave this dough to rise and come back. After about an hour of rising, the dough has nearly doubled in size. This is due to all the carbon dioxide gas produced by the fermentation reaction. After punching down the dough to release some of the excess CO2, we shape our bread. Today we are making a braided bread, so we use three small balls of dough and braid them together to form a loaf. Once we have a full tray of loaves, we're ready to bake. As I mentioned earlier, the sugar in the bread goes through several reactions at high temperatures called Maillard reactions that produce the brown crust. There are many of these reactions, but they are approximated by the reaction on screen, the conversion of a sugar aldehyde to an unsaturated aldehyde with help from the amino acids in bread. After about a half an hour of baking, the bread is finished. Check it out, you can see the little bubbles and pockets left by the CO2 gas and the golden brown crust from the Maillard reactions. Not to mention it tastes pretty good too. Okay, let's recap. Yeast acts as the leavening agent in bread by converting glucose into carbon dioxide and ethanol. The carbon dioxide causes the bread to rise. Water activates the yeast and helps the dry ingredients mix together. Sugar acts as a fuel for yeast and helps form the crust. Oil softens the bread. Flour provides the structure of the bread. Kneading bread causes the dough to stretch, forming more hydrogen bonds between gluten molecules that strengthen the dough. Finally, the sugar goes through Maillard reactions in the oven that cause 
the golden brown crust to appear on the bread. Now you know the basics of the chemistry behind bread. Who knew there was so much behind your morning toast?